here's another one. Larry Lewis told us that Brady Werner likes to throw what he calls the OK change. Well, he does, and, and uh, you know, Jeff Burrell said he just kind of they didn't want him to throw a curveball, and we talked about that during our semifinal games, and you know, it's tough on a lot of kids' arm because they don't throw it properly. There is a curveball, though, as he's gotten to be 12 years old, his dad has acquiesced and let him do that. But he also has a change-up to go along with that curveball. Right here, opens up a little bit, and you'll see why opening up a little bit quick, the ball is way, way outside. Runs the count to two and two. Again, gets him to go after one, breaking outside of the strike zone, and a ruse is a strikeout victim. Well, the only way to really hit this pitch is, first of all, to practice it. And what Long Beach does is they have their dads, like Jeff Burroughs, Larry Lewis, actually throw that pitch. But you can move up closer to the plate, also move up in the box, especially if a pitcher like Werner is not overpowering like Sean Burroughs, who throws up about 75 miles per hour. Brings up Julio Bustavino, the first baseman who goes after the first pitch, then DeFazio will retire him. Next Saturday on ABC Sports Golf's big hitters take aim at the Greater Milwaukee Open. And ABC's college football kicks off regional coverage. Miami battling Boston College, Washington State against Michigan, Washington hosts Stanford, or LSU meets Texas A&M. Check your local listings for the game on your ABC station and call your local cable operator to find out which of these regional games will be available on pay-per-view. And on the Wendy's kickoff classic earlier, Florida State, the number one team in the nation, well, they showed why. They cover Kansas 42 to nothing. Charlie Ward, of course, a big Heisman Trophy candidate, and their point guard, the basketball team as well, 16 to 26, or just under 200 yards. Ball two to Rodriguez. One of the available pitchers for the Panama team, Cesar Dado, that's what his coach called him. Boy, a lot of affection. You know, the coach, uh, Mateo, is only 24 years of age. He's a student down in Panama. Down now 3-0. and Boy, they are proud to be here. Uh, but we talked about some of their favorite players, but one of them, Rod Carew, with about seven batting championships. The last guy to hit close to 400, other than George Brett at 388. Four pitches, Rodriguez is aboard. Without question, Panama is the first time that their country has been represented in a final. And perhaps a future little league. The second baseman, Juan Saracen, only one for one, hasn't had a lot of plate appearances in this series. Which is inside. And Werner losing control with five straight balls. Now. You know, we talked about Rodriguez, who's down at first. Now, he, he pitched a shutout. Had a little bit of a, a cold and tender arm, so he's not pitching today. But the backup pitch is the second the backup pitcher for Long Beach. He gave up seven runs, and that's the Fazio. So Panama a little deeper if you have to go to another pitcher. Hitting the outside corner there. Count is one and one. There's that slow curve again. He chases after it trying to bunt. Strike two. Well, the rule is you have to wait if you're the runner on first to wait till the ball goes over and then you take your lead. Now, California, Long Beach feels that maybe, just maybe, Panama takes advantage of leaving a little bit early. That one's way outside. Now, but, if they do, there's a flag thrown? Well, there's supposed to be a flag. And, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Burrow's talking about the fact that he felt that maybe 20 times over the course of these four games in Panama that they may have left early. But there has I haven't seen a flag. Umpire. Look at Jeff tough, Burrows. Tough call for the umpire, too. Good pitch for strike three. And he gets out of the inning without giving up a hit. One is left again. We're scoreless after one and a half in Williamsburg. 12-year-old. He now pitches in the Pirates organization. Marietta won it 3-1. He made up an interesting point that everybody uh, was talking to him about what happened when you went back to Marietta, Georgia. And he said, you know, I'm a 12-year-old kid. Everybody is saying, here's the guy that won the Little League World Series. Everybody gunning for him. But he's 6'5 now, throws over 90 miles per hour, and is playing for that double-A team uh, in the organization of the Pirates. Coming back from some arm problems, I understand, or shoulder trouble. 
He had some shoulder problems? Yes, he did. Kevin Miller now steps in. Takes ball one. Kevin Miller, this is what he's looking at. You know, in the major leagues, you have some kind of backdrop, green or black. You're looking right at white shirts. Ball two. There's a few again you talked about. Right back at the pitcher off his glove to the shortstop, Atencio, who makes a nice play. I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you what, boy, he looks like he belongs in the big leagues. He is smooth. He reminds me, you said the other day, of Tony Fernandez from the Dominican Republic. But, I mean, this is a good play by Batia. He knocks it down. We give him an assist right here. And then Atencio says, oh, I do this in uh, infield practice. I'll do it now. He reminds me of Robin Yount when he came up at 19. Good arm. Good, smooth mechanics. Right on the number. Nice stretch as well. A hot shot right down to the third baseman, Navarro. Now, you would think, John, a team that has been out, uh, or at least, you know, a team when you're playing a team against, like, Long Beach has outscored their opposition 52-9 to nine, that you'd be intimidated. But uh, Carlos Mateo, he really thinks this ball club could win, the coach of Panama. I think mainly because he thinks they're not going to make too many mistakes defensively. And obviously, on the last two plays, a great example of just how strong they are defensively. Frank Kirkland after the first pitch, and Jim Palmer with the grab out here in the booth. The toss back. Got to protect you. I'm telling you, it's great to have a Hall of Famer next to you. Well, you know, like I said last night at the dinner, we had Musburger the last couple of years. He at least played Little League in Montana. You know, like, he's not a Canadian uh, oh, okay. hockey player like right. you. Even though you did play Little League. That's right. We used hockey sticks for bats. What were you better at? Hockey. Much better. That pitch is high. Tries to check his swing, but cannot pull it off. Tonight, Full House's John Stamos stars in the network premiere of Born to Ride, the ABC Saturday night movie, followed by The Commish. All action all night tonight on ABC. Two and two is the count. Frank Kirkland trying to get something started for Long Beach. Low and outside. Three and two, full count. Brent with his first home run ever on Wednesday. I mean, ever. No inside the Parkers. Wait till the uh, Little League World Series hits your first home run. Fouls that one straight back as well. Uh, the scoreboard, the heat, I believe, has gotten to it. It's, it's gone a little bananas on us here. I think that scoreboard is used to having for the team is playing being uh, opposed by the Americans to having a lot more runs. Don't know how to handle this at this point. There's where we really stand. Good curveball over the top. Kirkland can't get it, and he's a strikeout victim. Back with more in a moment. First, let's join our Julie Moran. Well, John, I'm here with the kid, Gary Carter, who received the Bill Shea Distinguished Little League Graduate Award. And I know you have some fond memories of Little League in West Fullerton, California. Well, I really do, Julie. I, I guess the biggest uh, and most memorable one for me was when I lost my mother and I was just 12 years of age and they postponed one of the games because of her funeral. And then the next game I came back and I threw a no hitter and I felt like that was for my mom. And I remember as a 12 year old, um, I, we had a great season as a team. We were 20 and one and I personally was able to go 13 and 0 and hit something like 666. I wish we could have those days back again. I bet you do. I know you talked to Billy Gwen, the catcher for Long Beach today. What did you tell him? I just said, uh, make those catchers proud out there. And it seems as though he was psyched up. Didn't seem very nervous, so I figured that he was going to go out and have a good game. Thanks for joining us today, Gary. Okay, my pleasure. All right, Julie, thanks a lot. Thanks to Gary Carter. And congratulations as well as Saldana chases the first pitch. Gary Carter, uh, we mentioned that, that you were just the second former Little Leaguer to go into baseball's Hall of Fame. He might become another one now. Well, you had 324 home runs and catch for uh, 19 years, be on a world championship. You got a great chance to go to the Hall of Fame. So 
Aldana with the bunt. He tried to deaden it the way you talked about the other day. Well, this is different than a sacrifice, but what you want to do is you've got to have the bat head above the handle. You have to have that angle. Okay. Otherwise, if you drop it, it's just not going to work. Let's see if he keeps the bat head above what? his right hand. And that's a pretty good job. The ball going away, and of course, this was a drag bunt. He's trying to get on first. Swings at this one to the shortstop Burrows. Guns him down with that rifle arm of his. Well, you saw a good defense, and one thing that Jamie Saldana can do is make contact, and he does. Right here. See it into the glove. Good balance. You see what kind of movement he has on his ball. <laughs> Looking at that as a hitter. That brings up Onesimo Morales. And he lifts that one out to left field, dropped in for a base hit. Well, here we go. I mean, you very rarely do we, in a final game, John, do we ever see a tie game. And now, your, your second time around, Brady Werner is going to maybe have to make some adjustments, and so is the offense. And already, Morales, well, maybe he's got him timed a little bit. Maybe they'll look for the breaking ball, which has been very effective for Werner. you got to make those adjustments. Brent, Brent up. Okay, be ready, Billy. Que esto es más fácil manejable. ¿Ok? Esta es una palanca. Así es más, mucho más fácil manejable. Atencio is the hitter now, and we hear from both managers, both in English and Spanish. It all comes down to the same thing, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Well, take a look where Brent Kirkland, the third baseman, is playing. I mean, he has could ha shake hands with Atencio way up at third base. Right back to the pitcher. This could be two. Warner down to Burrow. Not in time at first. And the throw looks like may have hit Kevin Miller in the foot. Well, it did it. It got him in the shin, I believe. You know, Burroughs, 74 miles per hour when he pitched the no-hitter. I mean, he guns it. He knows that's the only way he's going to get the double play. Brady Werner, he knows who's covering. That's the shortstop Burroughs. He didn't, I don't know if he hit the bag or not, but they call him out, and then he throws one. You want to walk down here a little bit? Walk up, walk down here. Kevin Miller, I don't right think right he ever touched it time. with his glove. Get a better look right here. Goes right by him walk because there, there is something on this ahead. ball. Hits him right in the right shin. I'll put some ice on it. Or maybe they won't. Yeah, right off his glove and off his shin. Miller's going to stay in, but obviously with some pain. And anybody who saw Sean Burroughs throw the no hitter <laughs> the other day can understand what Mr. Miller's going through. Abel Navarro chasing the first pitch for strike one. We, know, we talked about how fast that Burroughs threw. 74 miles per hour at a major league level from 60 feet 6 inches is 97.3 miles per hour. That's the reaction time. That's unbelievable. Well, no wonder he struck out 32 out of 36 hitters in the two starts he's had here. Oh, There's a changeup. Looks like the fastball. What a great location outside part of the plate. Navarro can't even make contact. Well ahead is Werner. Tries to get him to chase one. It bounces away. The throw down a second. But in there safe is Atencio. Well, this is what we talked about. Shortstop, pitcher, and catcher are very important. you got to block them. Sometimes you can't block them all. You keep them in front of you. And then you pounce on them. And even when you make a good throw, if the base runner gets a good jump, he's going to steal. There's the block. Way out in front of home plate. Does his job. Quick throw by Billy Gwynn. Tag by Burroughs, just there. Oh. Tell you what, a close play. Though. Oh, yeah. You got to give Billy Quinn some credit. Abel Navarro, two and two the count, two gone, runner on second. Right back past the pitcher. Into the center fielder, Moini. The throw coming in. The tag. Safe. The umpire 
saying the tag was not applied. Well, it wasn't. He slid right through his leg. Everything for the West worked perfect, except Billy Gwynn was not able to apply the tag. Nate Moaney, the center fielder, charged the ball, made a perfect throw. Me. Now watch, did he go right through his legs? He's out there to block the plate. See him slide through? I don't think he ever tagged him either. Good call by Andy Coneyard home plate. See the throw, he's there. Plus, he doesn't even have control of the ball from that angle. So great execution, but the ball just a little bit mishandled by the catcher. And the tag was not applied until after the foot was across the plate. The pop-up burrows waving everyone off. And for the first time in this World Series, Long Beach is behind. Okay. Got to get more than one to win anyways, guys. So let's go get him, huh? Come on. He's got some hits. We don't even have any hits yet. We can do it, guys. Come on, fire up. Larry Lewis trying to get his squad going. Here's that play at the plate again. And the only reason his play is close because Nate Moeny, the center fielder, makes a perfect throw in one hop. But Billy Gwynn unable to really handle the ball. And then you can see because he can't do that, he can't bring his glove down. Base runner slides right through his legs for the only run of this game. There he tags him. But his foot is already on the base. A little late at that point. As a result, it's one to nothing. Now, this is the third inning of this game. Keep this in mind. Long Beach hasn't gone three consecutive innings without scoring this week. So, Panama really doing a terrific job. If you go back to last game now, eight consecutive no-hit innings. For and this, this is the weakest part of the lineup for Long Beach. Gwynn only one for eight. Moini right behind him, two for nine. Well, you know, I asked Jeff Burrow's third base coach, his son, Sean Burrow, I said, how do you prepare for this? He said, well, we have 14 guys on the team. We split the teams up. I pitch, Larry Lewis catches, and if anything goes wrong, we don't either hit properly or we don't feel properly, we blow a whistle and stop. Down the line, but that one rolls foul for strike two. You know, we throw them curveballs, we throw them fastballs, 60, 65 miles per hour. So they've seen all these pitches, but they've never played under this pressure. Even though they were here last year, boy, to play at 12 years of age, 40,000 people looking on, trying to do what no other team has ever done got to make you a little bit nervous. Billy Gwynn with his mother here to help his cause. We'll need some help as he's in the hole at 0-2. Well, John, this team to get here, talking about Long Beach, they're 23-1. and And they did lose one time, 16-1. to Gwynn is a strikeout victim, the second in a row for Alex Betia. Well, you see a lot of slow curveballs, and boy, the fastball looks about at 90 miles per hour. And that's what Alex Patia is doing. Great control, hasn't walked anybody. The only runner for Long Beach has been somebody that's been hit by a pitch. Brings up Nate Moaney. Looks at one down low for ball one. Well, the strength of this team is to get on for the big guys. And that's what Gwynn and Moaney and DeFazio have to do for Burroughs and Werner. He's at one well out of the strike zone and bouncing around down there, helping out the pitcher. Again, perhaps some nerves on some of these guys. Well, here's another curveball. Is it a strike? No, it bounces, almost hits home plate. But again, you know, not reacting to the curveball is Long Beach. There's another one. Big break in that from 26 feet, too. if it's tough enough to get a hit for the bottom of the order. Perhaps they can work a walk. Well, Alex Petit, he's not a big guy. Pitcher for Panama, he's a five feet tall, 85 pounds. Off the plate, bounced foul. But what's important, whether you're five feet, 85 pounds, or you're five foot seven, 175 pound like Sean Burroughs, his mechanics. And Batia, nice wind up, pauses at the top, collects everything, uses the big part of his uh, muscles of his body, back of his shoulder and his legs to go towards home plate. Laney down to third base, Navarro guns him out.
So two are gone now. And a reminder tomorrow night, James Bond is back in the living daylight. Timothy Dalton stars in the ABC Sunday night movie tomorrow at a special time, 8.30, 7.30 Central. Yeah, living daylight, that's what Long Beach, I think, felt they would do to this Panama team if you've watched the four games here. That has not been the case. And Batia, he's doing exactly what his coach wants him, throwing strikes. There's a look at one of the good luck charms. There's a shot out to center field. Saldana drifts back to the warning track and is up with it for the final out of the third inning. Still no hits for Long Beach, and they trail 1-0. Regional action next Saturday on the home of college football. Welcome back. One to nothing is the score after three innings. Panama with the lead over Long Beach. Brady Werner doing a nice job on the mound, but he needs to get some offensive help. Now it's a tournament for 11 and 12 year olds. And of course, you have to have a 12 year old reporter. So Maria Sansone from Erie, Pennsylvania has been joining us this week. And right now she stands by with Brady Werner. I heard you're superstitious. Yeah, there's a lot of things I do like. Before every game, I eat Kel Kellogg's Corn Flakes. I don't know, I just started eating them, and we win every time, so I keep on doing it. And then we, we have lots of things. We have good duck trolls and rabbit foots. And that's what we use pretty much for good luck. Looking for a little help with the good luck, and he mentions the good luck troll. Good luck was not with him, though, last year, was it? No, it wasn't. Uh was going to make this team, fell in the swimming pool. It was under construction, 140 stitches. A year later, he's back on the mound. Doing a good job. But good luck for him today would be what they've done in those other four games here. Average to about 12, maybe 13 runs a game. Alex Betia swings at this one that dumps down. There's a look at some of those trolls. They're all over our lobby. <laughs> We're up high with that pitch. You know, one thing we didn't talk about, John, you did mention that it was hot. I talked to the Panamanian team, and he said, this is cool for Panama. Long Beach, you don't have this kind of humidity. Temperature in the 90s, humidity close to 100%. Well, advantage Panama when it comes to the weather, anyway. Longer, longer this game goes, the shadows, they, they creep. Take another look. Umpire Cam in the high fastball, but the shadows will creep out in front of home plate, make it even harder to see the ball. Gets him to chase one high and inside. They're on the count to two and two. Two, two. Just look at those shadows you mentioned that approach home plate as time runs on. Outside, ball three, and a full Thank count. You. Only one walk issued, and that was by Brady Werner for Long Beach. Been a well-played game. Swings after it, straight back at us again. Count remains full. from Panama with some rows from the USA trying to shut him down. That one is out of play as well. well remember, Batia, who has pitched so well today, with the only home run for Panama during this uh, World Series. Thank you. Looks like he's trying to hit another one. Trying to pick up the ball. We told you about the background. It's not a good one. Better have that window. You pick the ball up out of it. And he looks at strike three. You know, just like it, uh, so many minor and major league ball players, but balls out of the uh, from an infielder. As you take a look, this is what he is facing, and he just doesn't pick it up. Good fastball outside part of the plate. This will show you where it was. Another strikeout. Bringing in Julio Hustavino. Sends this one to the shortstop. Burrows up with it. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to catch that thing coming over. Well, you know, I, 
I always ask catchers that uh, caught Nolan Ryan, I said, you know, you had to wear a sponge. I think if I was a first baseman, when Burroughs lets it go, he lets it go from about maybe 60 feet because he, you know, hands way out front, catches it properly. I mean, look at this velocity. Ball just running away, and Kevin Miller with a nice stab. Cesar Rodriguez steps in against Warner. And looks at strike one. Tried to check his swing there and just got a piece of it for strike two. And reminder again that overhead is one of America's most enduring images, the Goodyear blimp. Serenely floating oh, over two. the Little League two. World Series. There's a look from high above. Reaches out, a little swinging butt. Oh. Good move by Billy Gwynn to let it go foul because there was no play. Well, the ball is going to go right down the line. The, the field is sloped here because of the drainage factor. And if you're the catcher or even a first baseman, the minute you see it go foul, you better jump on him. That's exactly what Billy Gwynn does. Gets it as soon as he can. 0 oh, and 2 is the count with two gone here in the top of the fourth inning. Oh. That one's high for ball one. Three more at bats in the regulation game one, for two. both teams. We're halfway through this game. Back a little bit past that point. Again to Burroughs, juggles it.